Hey, what's going on RC drivers? I have something very cool to share with you guys today. Something for the guys that like on-road cars, vintage cars, and love the RC modeling experience. That only means it's gotta be from Tamiya, right? Yes, it is the Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, and this is a great build-up kit. It's definitely gonna be awesome to build up on the workbench, and I think it's gotta be a lot of fun driving around the parking lot as well. So this is based on the M06 platform. It's actually the M06 L because it's the long wheelbase, and it's an RR version because it's rear wheel drive and rear motor. And there's a lot of neat little features in this car, so I'm gonna show you all the details. And I think we're gonna go over this body in great detail as well. It just looks so cool. So let's head over to the workbench and check it out. Take a look at the detail that Tamiya put into this Carmen Ghia body. It is absolutely incredible for a Lexan body. They did a fantastic job on this thing. Just lots of detail throughout the decals on here, the chrome bumpers, chrome headlights. It does take some time to put a body like this together between uh, all the different paint coats and uh, getting all the decals situated on there, cutting it out. I mean, I guess you could probably do it in a full day if you sat down and did it. Here is the box that the Tamiya Volkswagen Carme Ghia comes in. And uh, like all Tamiya kits, it is a full build-up kit. They do give you the speed controller and the motor. Uh, but the real rock star here is this body here. Check out that front bumper on it. Uh, the headlights are actual buckets. They do mount to the uh, bumper on the inside of the body. So rather than being two side tape like a bunch of other Tamiya bodies, uh, it is kind of integrated into each other. So it stays secure. I definitely like that setup versus the old two sided tape method. Uh, but lots of decals on here. Check out that chrome window decal, um, the trim around the windows. And actually went and tinted the windows with a Tamiya spray on this. Uh, so that's why you, you see the tint there. It's not in the decal itself. Uh, but a lot of decal work, even in the front here. Just a little tip when you are applying the decals to this, use a heat gun. Uh, reason why I tell you to do that is because it helps the, the decal adhesive to basically uh, adhere to the body and it allows the decal to contour around areas like uh, the, the lights here. So these little lights are decals and so when you heat them up it allows that decal to contour over it and it won't be all rigid and uh you know possibly get dirt stuck to it as well but uh you know real again really nice chrome bumpers let me turn this thing around so you can see the back side of it there is the rear bumper on there uh even has the single mirror just for the driver's side doesn't have one on the passenger side and uh, the only thing that uh, maybe I wish to me would start moving towards is getting rid of the body post. We're starting to see more manufacturers get rid of body posts. And this is just one of those amazingly detailed vehicles where you'd really like to see no body posts on it. So maybe that's something they could work on in the future. But check out those chrome wheels on there. It looks really nice. It does have the 60D tires on this. Uh, it's a treaded tire, but it definitely gives it that great look of a vintage vehicle. All right, let me get the body off and we can start to check out some of the details of the M06 chassis. And here's what's under the hood. Check out this small chassis from Tamiya. Very compact, but a lot of neat little features throughout this thing. Just the way it's engineered, designed, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to put these things together. Of course, drive them and, and just look at them overall. To me, it really has some unique ideas when it comes to vehicle setups. All right, so up front here, we do have shocks. Uh, however, they're not oil damp shocks. They are friction dampers. So this thing is a little bouncy. Same in the rear. So uh, the rear actually has a more stand-up style of shock. Still a friction damper, and it looks like they have a different spring there as well because this is a rear-mounted motor in the car, so there's some weight back there, so I'm guessing that's why we see the different spring colors. Uh, but up front, pretty simple wishbone, double wishbone design. Uh, we got the lower arm here, two-piece that you screwed together, a simple upper link uh, for the camber rod, and uh, it's even got the uh, large knuckles, the four-wheel drive style of large knuckles in there, uh, which is obviously just a, a rolling axle right now. It is a full bushing kit throughout this thing is all the, your standard white bushings from Tamiya and uh, some even in the drivetrain. Uh, but before I move on to the drivetrain, let's just round out the rest of the suspension and, and front end of this thing. We've got our, our body mounts that get cut down. Here is a nice foam little front bumper to protect the front end. Hopefully you never have to use that. You don't want to mess up that nice looking body, but it is there just in case you bump into something. 
Moving a little farther back, I like this little swoop front brace thing they have going on here. That is pretty neat how that's set up. But uh, the reason why they do that is uh, so that steering rod gets down into the twin cranks in the front. And as you can see, the Ackerman bar is right there. And then right behind it is where the battery starts. So you get that battery kind of farther forward to get some weight in the front. So the weight, the front end of it doesn't feel light when you're driving around. And uh, it does accept standard style batteries. It looks like a nice square battery box, so it should fit lipos without an issue. And uh, the chassis on here is a tub style chassis modular uh, because you could go ahead and remove this section here. So this is the section that makes it the L chassis. It lengthens the chassis. And you could see that you could go and move this chassis forward uh, to create a smaller M06 chassis for the different body styles that are available from Tamiya. But uh, while I have it upside down, check out those really short arms on there, little stubby turnbuckles for the steering, and uh, you know Phillips hardware throughout. I know a lot of people don't like Phillips hardware, but uh, if you have the right screwdriver. They work just fine. I, I I don't mind it so much on Tamiya's uh, vehicles because I do have the right screwdriver to put this thing together. So I don't really have an issue with these screws. And there's some short arms in the rear. Let's move over to the rear of the vehicle. And uh, this is where the business end is, obviously, because we've got the transmission back here. And as you would expect, you know, plastic gears on the inside from Tamiya. It does have a gear differential. They give you the greases that you need to at least lubricate the gears. Uh, but what I do like is they do have metal dog bone axles on here and metal outdrives and metal stub axles for the wheels. You know, 12 millimeter hex behind the wheel here for the wheel to bolt to kind of your standard thing not uh you know you're probably not going to go crazy with the modifications on this but they do have a ton of aftermarket parts for it so if you do want to hop it up that is a possibility as well uh, it does come with the silver can 540 motor uh, pinion gear of course and uh, it does come with the speed controller this is the tble 02 and it is a brushed slash brushless uh, motor or speed controller. So if you want to later on down the road, you can go and uh, bump up the power with a brushless motor in here. Now, what you're going to need to get is your radio system and uh, a servo. So I have a standard servo here just for the steering. I'm gonna use a new Spectrum DX3 radio uh, that comes with this receiver right here. And uh, hooking everything up is fairly simple. They've got bullet plugs here for the motor. Uh, it does have the Tamiya connector on there. That's pretty much what we're used to. So I might wind up running this with just a nickel metal hydride battery that I have laying around for that does have a Tamiya connector on there. I don't think I'm going to go blistering fast with this. I, I don't intend to because I kind of want the, the scale look of this thing driving around. I think that's going to be the fun factor is uh, on-road scale here, not just thrashing around uh, at full throttle in the parking lot. But uh, really easy to put this thing together. If you've never built a kit before, Tamiya kits are awesome for first builds. Uh, definitely walks you through the instructions and shows you all the different screw sizes and parts and uh, it's, it's just very easy to put together so if this body style is definitely something you like if the style of vehicle is something you like uh, you know definitely don't shy away from building it it's it's a great kit all right that's enough of me talking i think it's time to go outside and just take this thing for a rip and see how cool it looks driving around on the asphalt
Okay, so here's what driving this Tamiya Carmen Ghia is like. It's like, you know, someone going into their garage and taking out the full-scale version of this that's been sitting there on jacks for a long time. They pull the car cover off, wash it off, and they head out to drive it down a country road and kind of get on the gas a little bit in the turns and this thing kind of just bounces around because maybe the suspension is shot from sitting so long. That's kind of what this is like. It is so much fun to drive. You could just kind of imagine yourself behind the wheel just ripping around with this thing and because it has those friction shocks in there it bounces a lot but it just adds so much to the fun factor of this that I just kept driving it and driving it and driving it until the battery is dead and when that battery is dead I threw another one in and I just couldn't get enough of it for some reason I just wanted to drive it some more. Uh, the steering on here it, it's kind of got a wide steering radius to it because it's got some hard tires in the front so it actually just works all together. The speed of it the way it handles you know how much it turns it all works together perfectly for a fun driving experience. Uh, you know, it's not ripping fast, but it is fast enough to actually catch some air off of the ripples in the asphalt. Uh, you know, and again, when you hit some of those ripples, maybe you're turning, it just bounces through that corner. And that's really the fun factor behind this. Beyond just the look of the body, this thing looks very cool out there. And it's really got to appeal to those who are into Volkswagens. Uh, you know, maybe you have a real one or maybe you always want one. I, I remember seeing a couple of these out on the road. Always thought they were really cool. And uh, this is certainly a lot of fun. It is just a great scale replica of, of the real thing. And to me, they built some fun machines. Uh, they definitely give you a great RC experience. You know, is there anything I would change on this? Not really. I mean, just go throw some ball bearings in here and, and really just enjoy this car. I know a lot of people race these at like the TCS series and stuff like that. But, you know, if you're not a racer, this thing will be a blast in the park lot. Just make sure you grab some good glue for the tires. I did peel the tires off of the rear of this. Uh, there are are softer tires on the rear than in the front just be aware of that that you you put them uh, in the back because if you put the hard tires in the back it's just going to spin out a lot so just be aware of that you know it's a great kit i think it's about 150 dollars. so much fun on all different levels you know if you're looking for something to build to me it really has a wide selection of, of great vehicles all right guys thanks for checking out our review of the Tamiya m06 lrr Carmen, Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, it's got a long name to it. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell. We'll see you back soon for some more RC Driver reviews.